This time we're going to look at a, a funny set, a pair of methods that you might not use very often, but when you need them, they are really, really useful. And those are make trans and translate. So let me give you the, sort of the basic idea behind what we're trying to do. Let's say I have a string here, s equals a, b, c, d, e, f, a, b, c, d, e, f. And I want to replace every time, you know, replace every a with o and replace every C with X. So let's say I want to do that. Could I say S dot replace and we'll say A O and then dot replace C X? Yeah, absolutely we could. And now I've gotten exactly the result that I wanted, which is a mess, but it works. So that actually can be done with replace. It's a little clunky that I have to call replace twice, but it works. What though if I have the same string, I say replace every A with E and replace every E with I, and then replace every I with O. Um, uh oh, well this is gonna be a problem, right? So if I say here S equals A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, and then A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, let's do A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I just for kicks, do a little more, I'll put this up here. So now if I say S dot replace A with E, replace E with I, and replace I with O, I'm gonna end up with a lot of O's. Uh-oh, <laughs> why did this happen? It's because I first said, well, let's replace all the A's with E's. Now I have lots of E's, right? If we look at the result of this, then we'll see all the A's have been turned to E's, but the original E's are still E's. And now I'm saying replace anything that's an E, so it's gonna include the A's that were turned to E's and the original E's. And then I have a whole bunch of I's. All right, boy, glasses will be expensive. And then I'm gonna turn all the I's, both the original ones and the new ones, into O's. And that's what gives me my trouble. So the point of translate is to basically say, let's do this all at once in parallel. And let's not let early replacements affect later replacements. So it would be very nice to just say S dot translate. And then what? And then what? Well, what we're gonna to need to do is somehow come up with a mapping between what we want the old stuff to be and the new stuff to be. And the way that, that mapping is produced in modern Python is to use make trans. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna say D equals str make trans. And notice that I'm gonna invoke it, I mean, I could invoke it on my individual string, but it's typically invoked as a class method, str.make trans. And I'm gonna say what I wanna to change to what. Now there are two different ways that I could do that. I could say I wanna make, say, A, E I is going to then be E I O. Notice that I have these two parallel strings, they have to be the same length. And what do I get back? I get a dictionary. A dictionary showing where the keys are the ASCII values, actually the Unicode values of the things we want to change on the left, and on the right are the things we want to get back. Notice that they're turning into numbers, which just makes it easier for everyone, except the humans involved. And now I can say s.translate and apply this dictionary to it. And now indeed I've done the translations, but only the original a's have turned into e's, the original e's have turned into i's, the original i's have turned into o's. I don't have this gobbledygook of lots of o's and all sorts of things messing up each other. So you see how you can do this. Now, could I instead have created my own dictionary and just applied it? Absolutely, but make trans makes it a little easier to do that. Now, make trans can be invoked, as I think I mentioned earlier, in two different ways. One is to have these two strings. Another is to do it as a dictionary. So I can say d equals stir make trans. And I'm gonna say here, well, I wanna have a dictionary where a's are turned into e's, and e's are turned into i's, and i's are turned into o's. Just make sure to have those all. And then my dictionary is basically the same. And now if I say s.translate of d, it actually works the same way. Right, in fact, I can say here, you know, we can take a look, but these two strings would appear to be the same. Let me just do a quick check here. Is that equal equal to S translate of D? And it is. So you can play with this however you want to. Like, is it easier to do a dictionary or a string? I think if you're trying to translate a long list of parallel things, then actually two strings might be easier. Um, if it's not um, a long list, then a dictionary might be easier for you to do as well. There is a third part to this, that if I can say here, let's say I say uh, uh, D equals str make trans, I'm gonna say, well, A, B, C, or let's say A, E, I is going to be turned into E, I, O. But then I'm gonna say here, B, C. B, C, what is this third string here? This is a string describing the characters that I want to just go away. So if I now say s.translate of D, 
you can see it's now E, which is the original I, uh, E, which is the original A, and then B and C are gone, and then I have D, and then I, which is the original E, and so forth. Um, so again, this doesn't solve, it solves one particular specific problem that I do occasionally encounter, um, but it's not used all that often. But you're going to almost certainly want to use both make trans and translate together into solving these sorts of problems. Uh, let me just show you one more thing, actually, which is kind of fun. So this is old, uh, I don't even want to call it an encryption technique, sort of a text hiding technique called ROT13. And ROT13 basically says, let's swap the two halves of the English alphabet. So if I have here, I'm going to do an import string, and string ASCII lowercase, that's going to be my letters here. And you can see we have 26 letters, so if I, which is typical for English. And if I say string.ASCII lowercase, and I'm going to stay here from 13 until the end. So 13 until the end is n until z. And what I can do is I can say, well, I want to take ASCII lowercase of 13 until the end plus string ASCII lowercase until 13. And now I've swapped the two halves of the alphabet. What I can now do is I can set up a translation table. So I can say rot 13 d equals and now we're going to say str.maketrans, and our originals are going to be string ASCII lowercase. That's going to be the original string we have, and the translation string is going to be this whole thing that I just wrote, so I'm just going to copy and paste it there. And now I have a translation table. So now I can say, you know, s equals hello out there, and I can say s.translate using the ROT13 dictionary. And now I've turned it into ROT13, which is completely indecipherable until someone actually then runs it again. And if I say S translate, well, if I say X translate of ROT13D, I get it back. And that's sort of the genius of ROT13 and why it's not really a very effective code. You'll see all sorts of things sort of hidden online uh, in ROT13. It's not that, that useful, but it's sort of a cutesy way to do things. There used to be news groups online that would hide potentially offensive jokes using ROT13, and then you would, um, un or you would decrypt them or un-ROT13 them. Anyway, so that's a quick example of how we can use uh, make, translate, uh, make trans and translate. And uh, on to the next video.